Blog Talk Radio. Uh... Welcome to uh, this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. My name is Chris. Uh, I'm going to read to you a, a reading from the Radiant Sutras, just to su- sort of set the mood here. Rocking, undulating, swaying, carried by rhythm. Cherish the streaming energy flooding your body as a current of the divine. Oh, Radiant One, ride the waves of excitement. Ecstatic motion. Ride the waves of ecstatic motion into a sublime fusion of passion, peace, clarity, truth, and love. From the Radiant Sutras, uh, donated by Josephine Smith. So thank you, Josephine. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I would like to uh, welcome everybody. In the uh, archives, we have Elizabeth Bashi, MJ, a couple of guests there too. But before we start going, I would like to welcome the queen of questionable comforts, Amelia Centara herself. Here she is, and I, I think she, you know, there's a little bit of time to reach Ireland. There it is. Hello, oh. everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good to be here as always. Welcome. Hi, Chrism. Hello. And how are you this day, night? I guess it's night there in uh, Ireland, 11 o'clock. Yep, just gone 11 o'clock here in Ireland and the UK and midnight in Europe. We're an hour behind them. Um, wow. So it's good to be here. Welcome I'll to begin the show. As always, I guess, Chrism, I'll just begin as always and I will give people the address of where they can go to if they want to make a donation to support the work of Kundalini Awakening Systems. Um, The address is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and on the upper right hand corner you will see a donate button and it's easy to follow after that. All donations are gratefully received. Please don't feel any pressure to donate. It's just people ask where they can donate um, because they're in a position to do so and they want to support the program and support CRISM. So um, that's where you can go if you wish to do it, www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And that's it from me, CRISM. Well, I would like to welcome uh, all of the of the listeners uh, that are currently in the uh, chat room right now. Let's see, I'm hearing that echo from you again, Amelia, so I'm going to put you in the blue. And trying to put Amelia in the blue. There we go. Uh, So everyone who is listening in the chat room, hello, 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 and welcome. And everybody who is listening to this program in the archives, hello, hello to you as well. And everybody who is listening outside of the archives and outside of the uh, chat room on their own computers, well, hello, hello, hello to you as well. Welcome, everyone, to this, to this program, to this uh, broadcast today. Uh, this broadcast today, uh, I'm doing something a little bit different. I've had Amelia Santara going through some of the, uh, some of the groups and collecting questions that people have asked, and I thought... Uh, this might be a helpful alternative to me just kind of like putting the phone number out there all the time, which I'll do right now. If you if you would like to call in, the phone number is 347-934-0026. You can call in with any question that you might have about the Kundalini. Uh, but from there, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, bring it over to Rosemary, who's got to leave very quickly, and she has some announcements she would like to make. Hello, Rosemary. Yes. yes, good evening, and hello, everyone. The announcement is my standard announcement for a very short time yet. We have our Kundalini seminar very soon, 10 days about, 
September 27 and 28. We still have room for people. Rosemary G at usinternet.com or 651-452-3161. I would love to meet you even on the uh, email or on the phone before that. Um, it would be great to, to welcome even a few more people. Everybody uh, will will be able to meet Rosemary and Eileen and various other people that uh, you may be familiar with on the uh, on the Facebook groups or on the Yahoo groups or any of the communities that we have. So if nothing else, uh, you know, it's a great way to hook up with Kundalini uh, people. And, uh, you know, we're not making a lot of money on this. We're just basically paying uh, for what it costs to to rent the place and hold the place and have, you know, have the people there and all of that. So come on, come, come on over if you can check this out. It's, it can be very, very, very interesting and tactilely significant as well. Well, Rosemary, I, I, I guess you'll be taking off in a few minutes. A little before six, probably. I, I have a few minutes to listen. All right, all right. Here we go. Put you into the blue. And bringing Santara back online. And Santara, do you have some of those questions? I do. Go ahead and ask one, the first one that you have. Okay, Chrism. So I have about nine questions all together. So I begin with the first one, actually. Um so this is from somebody who says, sometimes the increasing flow of current I experience gives a fear that I'm going in the wrong way because I often see it written that, you know, this should not be practiced without a physical teacher. Good. Yes, yes. Yes, many, many, so could many, you many people. On that? Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, many, many people in the Hindu persuasion and in other Buddhist persuasions as well. Um, they feel, you know, they are taught, and I think they are taught correctly uh, in their, in, in, you know, from the Bhagavad Gita and from the, uh, from the Rishis, that, you know, Kundalini can be greatly assisted by having a flesh teacher, a living teacher. Who has gone there and done that? At least maybe a little further along than, than the uh, the person who is asking the question, and in this, I think this is an absolute correct uh, um, instruction to adhere to. However, uh, people that have the Kundalini uh, are not so common to you know, and, and not at levels that are that are able to help other people. I.e., you they don't have that kind of a connection where they can just go into a a person's scenario see that individual scenario and then go in to the population at large and see uh, predominant scenarios and then coalesce the individual scenario with the populate or the population scenario, coalesce those into a single teaching. And so that that is difficult to find people that can do that. And so, yes, indeed, if you can find a, a teacher that can do those things, wonderful. Definitely go with them. On the other hand, uh, you don't need to be feeling fear about anything of the Kundalini. Fear is of the ego. And so in a way, you can use that uh, method to, to look at it and say, well, do I need to be afraid of this? Is, is, you know, is fear something I want to use to modulate my enlightenment equation? And what part of me is feeling the fear? Oh, that's the ego. Well, then maybe I shouldn't be feeling fear just because it's the ego that's coming up and the ego needs to get used to doing things in a different way. Remember, we're not obliterating the ego. We're not killing the ego. We're not, you know, we're just correcting the ego. That's all. Um, so, you know, within that context, as you have the kundalini awakening happen, and yes, as the energy grows stronger and stronger, uh, release your fears. If, if the kundalini has placed you in the proximity, either online, you know, on the internet, or in person, 
the proximity of a kundalini awakened teacher, then you, you know, that is where you are. That is where you belong. That is the information that you must seek at this point in your journey. Doesn't mean you have to stay there forever. Doesn't mean that, you know, there, there aren't areas where you, you won't want to have a teacher. But in these areas at the beginning where the energy fluctuations are pretty strong, the ego has yet to come under a, a greater significant level of, of correction and therefore fear is present within the equation, well, then I will suggest that you, you do indeed uh, come into the proximity of a teacher or at least take advantage of the proximate uh, uh, quality that you have with the teacher that you're, you're currently discussing. Another, uh, you know, another aspect of this is as, as the kundalini grows stronger and stronger and stronger, it will also begin to direct you to where you can get a, a information that is more appropriate to your current situation. And so you want to pay attention to that. Don't just think that it's you just being a little, you know, Internet butterfly landing on this spiritual teaching, landing on that spiritual teaching, et cetera, et cetera. You are being guided. And if you have found a teacher uh, then that, that your kundalini wants you to learn from, then, you know, give up your protestations of, of I am a rock. You know, I'm, I don't need anybody to help me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, which I know so well because that's how I was at the beginning. Um, give up that ego-based uh, 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 self-indulgence. Give that up. Take advantage of what the Kundalini is giving you. It reminds me of that joke where, where the you know there's a flood and the guy's on the, you know, he, the flood gets so tall that that it, he has to go up on the roof of the house and he prays to God, you know, oh God, take me away from this flood. I, you know, I don't know how to swim and you know it's it, you know it's very bad. Take me away and and uh, you know some uh, some firemen come on onto his property with a boat, you know, and they're saying, hey, jump, jump, we'll get you. So, no, no, no. The man says, no, 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 I'm praying to God I'm in good hands. And so the fire department leaves. And then, uh, you know, a, a, another group of rescuers come along, and he says, no, 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 I'm praying to God. God will take care of me. And then a helicopter comes to, to take him off of the roof of his house, and he says, no, 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 I'm praying to God. God will take care of me. Well, the, the flood comes up, it washes him away, he drowns, and, and he stands before God, and he says, well, I asked you, and I asked you, and I asked you, and you didn't help, help me. How come you didn't help me? And God looks at him and says, I sent firemen in a boat, I sent another group of rescuers, I sent a helicopter. And the moral of the story is to take advantage of what the Kundalini is showing you right now. Kundalini and God are synonymous. Kundalini is a bridge into the divine reality. Divine reality is the place of divinity. Divinity is the place of God. So whether it's the bridge or, or the chair that God sits on, providing God sits on a chair, or it's just the heavenly fields, you know, where, where different divinities are able to coalesce together and, and, and continue their process, you need to pay attention to your kundalini. Your kundalini knows you better than you know yourself. And it knows who would be the best teacher for this part of your kundalini awakening experience. And it has led you to that teacher. I'm not saying the teacher is me. I'm saying that there is a teacher out there that that uh, that you've come across because of your kundalini that you may want to listen to. That teacher could be me. It's up for you to discern it. You discern what is going to be, uh, what teacher will be helpful to you, but discern it through the guidance and the instruction of your kundalini. And, and, and so you will, as... As the energy gets stronger and stronger and stronger within the body, it's going to aggravate aspects of the ego that are not yet balanced. And that is where the ego will cause itself to go into fear. Oh, my gosh. 
you know, I don't have this teacher that I that I am uh, giving my all to, and therefore I must be doing it wrong. Well, the teacher is the Kundalini. The ultimate teacher is the Kundalini. That's how you become self-realized. You don't become self-realized because you know uh, you know y- y- you found the right teacher. You become self-realized because the Kundalini within you is teaching you and guiding you and helping you helping you to form the patterns of probability that you can work from in order to come into a greater expression of the flow of kundalini. It also gives you an instruction about how much control your ego still has over your decision-making. Are you making decisions based upon fear? Are you making decisions based upon want, or, you know, fear of loss or want of gain? These types of scenarios, pull out of that if you can and just make the change, make the attitude change with your ego. And if you do still feel a little fear, that's okay. That's okay. Just make the self-corrections. Self-correct over and over and over and over. It's not me that's fearing. It's my ego that's fearing. And it's my ego that's fearing because it's not used to not being in control. Bottom line, right there. Now, as the, as the energy does come through stronger and stronger and stronger, it will. And some of these toxins will have to come to the surface. Toxins such as fear. Toxins such as, uh, you know, oh, am I doing it the right way, the correct way. Okay. There are many correct ways. One correct way is yes. Uh, as as, the, as some of the uh, Vedic scholars have written, yeah, you want to have a teacher with you that knows about the kundalini and, and has you know a kundalini awakening no they're not that common but the kundalini will lead you to the one that she feels is most appropriate to you so if you have been led to me then take that as as an option for yourself chrism isn't the only one chrism is just one among others now granted i don't know others who can do you know what i'm doing but, you know, I'm sure they could say the same thing. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, you don't, don't worry about, about teachers. Your kundalini will take you to the right teacher. If you're hearing this broadcast or you're on any of the communities that my kundalini has developed on Facebook and on Yahoo and on YouTube and, and Google Plus and, you know, these other networks, then you might want to consider uh, reading or listening or watching the videos and taking the information that is being given for your benefit. It's free, folks. You're not dropping a dime on this. You're paying no money. Uh, Amelia and John are are paying for this show. Uh, People have donated things like computers to me and 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 other other services to me so this can be written so all of this is coalesced to serve you my friends you and speaking of the other places to get this information of course you can go to the youtube network and you can type in chrism.kundalini you can go to Google Plus and you can uh, go to the community section and type in Kundalini Awakening, exclamation point. Uh, you can go to the Facebook communities where we have Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 and Kundalini Awakening, exclamation point. We also have a, a group for those who would like to be my private students. And uh, so you just, you know, if that is currently a, a secret group. But uh, if, you, if you email me privately at kfireforall at yahoo.com, the K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com, and let me know of your interest, I will do my utmost to try to add you into that group. I'm not the easiest teacher, got to warn you, right off the bat, ask, ask Amelia, she'll tell you, true. <laughs> so... so uh, also, so you can go to those those places, the Yahoo Network, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups. You can also go to the main website, which is uh, designed and maintained by Glenn Ola. Thank you, Glenn. 
And uh, that is Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com. So Kundalini Awakening Systems one dot com. And there's a lot of information there as well as videos that you can hear. Uh, so you have options. You have you have many, many different options that you can choose to partake of or not. Now, you know, as far as Chrisim as a teacher, people have written every nasty thing about me that you can imagine. Um, I've been compared to a Harry Potter uh, character. I think they were called the Dementors, which is kind of a compliment, I guess. I, You know, flying around is, would be a fun thing, but, you know, not necessarily out there to hurt anybody. Uh, they, they've they given me the qualities of, of a sexual predator. They've given me the qualities of a, of a person who is interested in satanic qualities because I support the, uh, the, the, the spine being a serpent in the body. And, of course, you know, some of the belief systems, wow, that's going to be way off to them. And so, you know, I become spawn of Satan. Um, what else? Uh, you'll run in to people that just, you know, don't agree with what I say or don't like what I do because I step outside of the box of the way they like things done. And frankly, I don't care. I'll just put this information out there as freely as I can, and uh, I will do the work uh, of the safeties, you know, and uh, let let you, friendly people, make your own choices about how this is. Let your kundalini discern what it is I teach. That's the ultimate guidance. If your kundalini says, listen to this man, then you better listen to this man. If the kundalini says, don't listen to that person, then don't listen to that other person. Okay. So, bringing Santara back on here. Yes, Your Holiness. Do you have another question? I do, and just to say to the people there, hi everybody again in the chat room, please feel free to type a question there, and we will ask that the next time before one of the ones that I have here. So if anybody has anything they'd like to ask Chrism, please type it there. The next question, Chrism, is about, um, well, it says, do these sounds, lamb, vam, ram, yam, ham, and all of those, help us to raise the particular chakra that they are associated with? Well, before I answer that one, I need, I'm going to ask the, the flash chat people, the chat room, is the sound coming through okay? I'll just uh, wait a moment here to see if anybody starts typing. Um, maybe you could type flash G or uh, somebody. MJ. MJ, okay. Thank you, thank you. Let me know if it's, because, you know, if the sound's bad, I just want to fix it. Thank you, Fast G. It's okay, just okay. Amelia is loud. Amelia. Well, you know, that's that's typically the case. <laughs> <laughs> no comments. I'm going blue now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Okay, all right. So, Aya. Yeah. So, Ram, Bam, Man, Pam, Spam. Spam isn't one of them. I'm just kind of adding that in. If you're of the of the Hindu belief system, uh, this has this has been uh, taught for many millennia. That uh, thank you, B I V B A V. Thank you, B E A I V I. Thank you. Uh, in, in the Hindu faith and the uh, and the Sanatana uh, information, Sanatana being basically Vedic uh, scholars, you know, getting together and deciding to agree on certain things. Uh, they they like to 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 insert seed syllables into each mantra. And these seed syllables would be Ram, Bam, you know, Ham, all of these things. And frankly, no, no, this is not required. This is not necessary. 
Uh, it's helpful for the people who practice the faith of Hinduism, sure. It's helpful for people that are in a, in a devout practice of, of uh, the sanatana virtues. But for just regular person, you and I, you got to remember, I wasn't raised in a religion. I wasn't rela- raised in any kind of a belief system. My mother made me go to church to learn manners. And she, <laughs> I'm not sure of that uh, approach, but okay. And we only went twice a year, Christmas and Easter. That was it. And basically, it was just something really boring to me. And I couldn't wait to get out. So if you've been raised within a religious indoctrination that uh, that is uh, propelling you towards certain practices uh, for Kundalini, like Ram, Bam, Mam, Ham, and you want and and your your religion, your belief system, and your say your spiritual teachers all say, well, yes, yes, you must say these seed syllables in order to awaken the Kundalini. Well, then you're going to have to do that, unless you're not buying into it completely. My Kundalini awoke just fine, and you know I didn't do anything other than do re mi fa so la ti. You know, and, and, and I didn't even really do that with any kind of serious nature with regards to Kundalini. Kundalini just comes. She just comes. She just awakens in you. And all of a sudden, you know, your life changes. It's not a lot of Vam, Ram, Spam going on. It's just, you know, it's all about being open and accessible to the information that comes to you when the Kundalini does its activation or awakening. That's very important. That's very important for you to do. You need to understand that even as you listen to the voice right now, this voice, my voice, carries Shakti Kundalini on it. And for those of you who are sensitive, you're going to be getting it in your ears, through your station tube, into your eardrum, your tympanic membrane, uh, with nerves extending straight into the brain and straight into the spinal cord. Don't think that sound does not play a, a, a part in this. Of course it does. But unless you've been raised within a certain uh, specific belief system, uh, adopting belief systems that, that maybe don't have a great deal of reverence for you may not be the case. So for a Christian to go, Ram, Bam, Mom, Bam, Ham, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's like, well, so so you need to to understand that yes, sound can make a difference in a very very big way. Uh, everything from hearing beautiful beautiful spiritual oriented music or chanting, Om Namah Shivaya Om, things of that nature, or or uh, how beautiful art thou? Uh, you know, I mean, really spiritual music. Uh, you can see. Uh, and, you, and you can attest to the power that sound has for the Kundalini awakening. Uh, and, 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 and so it is definitely part of the, the process and part of the process towards activation leading towards an awakening. Uh, and, and, you know, you'll also find uh, responses uh, of a devotional quality very, very helpful. So devotional music, devotional chanting, uh, you yourself, as you do your devotional chanting to the Kundalini, if indeed you do that, uh, can be very, 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 very helpful. But you don't have to copy or you don't have to take in a belief system that is foreign to you uh, because they seem to have more information about the Kundalini. Trust your Kundalini. And if you're within the proximity of a Kundalini teacher, then trust what that Kundalini teacher is saying. Uh, you know, once again, I wasn't raised in a belief system at all, really, except for, you know, being in, in California, United States, uh, you know, North America, and the, you know, the weird uh, <laughs> manipulations of information that we have in this country, uh, which are copious in many but once you know kundalini allows you to see through those areas see through the 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 cracks of illusion into the 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 true light of truth 
you know, and, and so living here in this society, I did, I was not exposed to various belief systems. My mother, who was our pretty much our sole parent, uh, you know, when, when she was queried by us about why we didn't have a spiritual religion or why we didn't go to church on Sundays, things like that, she says, well, I want you to be able to feel what is right for you, and I will support you in whatever choice you make with regards to your religion or your spiritual belief systems. And, and I honor her to this very day for that, that great level of flexibility that she bestowed upon her children. And I would, I would suggest that you as well, even if you're steeped in a religion, you know, give your kids the freedom to choose what they want to work with. They may not. They may not, you know, be a diehard Christian or a diehard Hindu or a diehard Buddhist or a diehard Islamist. You know, they may want to be a shaman. They may want to go out there and worship those cedar trees out there in Siberia with that other woman. The talking cedar trees or something like that of Siberia. Okay, uh, so there are plenty, plenty of options when it comes to, to the belief system and the instructions from belief systems that a person can have. Uh, Ram, bam, ham, um, all of these seed syllables are effective for those people who practice that specific form of belief system, and it may, and it may work for you too if you feel called to do it. If your kundalini is saying, "Hey," Hey, Fasti, go ahead, practice those seed syllables. Hey, MJ Anderson, go ahead, practice those seed syllables, you know. Make sure you do them in the proper order at the proper time, so many times per chakra. I don't know. I forget how many times they want you to do that. If your kundalini is directing you towards that, then go for it. Once again, I'll say that the kundalini is the master teacher. And if the kundalini is saying, do this, this, or that, then you might want to do this, this, or that. Okay, so so when it comes to the Ram, Bam, Am, I keep putting in Spam, but Spam is not one of them. That's just me making a joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, I saw that fast. She, she thinks it's, so. If you want to do that, and you feel called to do that, and your Kundalini is calling you to do that, then do it. Then do it. I'm not going to guarantee that it will be successful for you, but I'm not going to guarantee it won't be. Give it a try. See if it works for you. And thank you for that excellent question, Amelia. Okay, the next one again is connected, Chrism, to what yogis say about the awakening of Kundalini without clearing the sunma is dangerous. That has been okay, written, okay. and what would your view go, be? Go back and ask that question again. Uh, the, the blog top, it wasn't, uh, I'm not sure everybody heard that. Go ahead, try it again. Okay, okay. So, um, yogis will say that the awakening of Kundalini without clearing the sasana, um is dangerous. What would your views on that be, please? <laughs> without clearing the sasana, now that's kind of funny. Um, okay, all right. So, so I'm gonna say, okay, Amelia, um, did you clear your shusumna today? Uh, was that was that part of your practice? Did you did you clean the kitchen, wash out the bathroom, and did you clear the shusumna as part of your daily cleansing routine? Uh, first of all, very few people know how. To clear a shusumna. A shusumna, uh, for those that aren't getting that, is the spinal cord. The spinal cord. And so the, the question is, well, how do you clear out the spinal cord uh, before you have the kundalini awakening? And, and you know, so it's it's not like you you know you inject Drano down the spinal cord and it takes out all the impurities and toxicities. You know, there there are certain things that a person will be guided to do with regard to the kundalini from the kundalini. The problem is that the ego has a hard time listening. The ego has a really hard time listening to that instruction and trying to make the jump from mundane 
uh, expressions into to the divine expressions. Yes, Amelia? Oh, I don't know how that happened. It just popped That's okay. Up. It's all right. No, you can, you can, as long as you don't, as soon as I start hearing an echo, I'll put you in the blue, okay? No, I'll go into the blue quickly, and I'll come back each time. I think that's better. As you wish. If that's, yes. Uh, so, where was I? Um, that's the problem with when you're streaming. It's hard to go back and find where you where you got out of the river. Um, let's see. Uh, Ah, yes, clearing the Shusumna. So the ego will have a hard time discerning uh, correct guidance uh, from from the Kundalini itself or, say, from an outside uh, society, program, religious system, whatever. I mean, you know, the, all their lives they've been taught to to obey what this book says, we'll say the Bible or the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita or the, you know, the eight, the eight limbs of Buddhism, any of those types of things. I am that, I am thou, thou is, thou is thou, all those books. Um, And so our, our ego mind, our egocentric mind has been filled with expectations that if you follow the counsel of this physical teacher, then all should be well. And inside, the kundalini may be going, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. And so there will be a, a kind of a push and a pull, a push and a pull inside the person about what to do, what is the correct thing to do. And they'll be having some fear. They'll be having some fear about not wanting to make the wrong choice. Not wanting to make the wrong choice. And and I'm, I'm going to tell you that go with what your kundalini wants you to do. Go with your gut, in a way. Um, it may change. It doesn't mean that once, you know, kundalini assigns a, a, a resource for information for you, that that's, that's it for you for the rest of your life. That may change. And I just want you to know, B-A-V, B-A-V, however you pronounce that, that, I, that I'm, I'm going to answer your questions. <laughs> okay, I just want to. I'm going to finish this line and then I'll go straight to your, to your question, uh, baby, baby, Evie, Evie. Can you type that out phonetically so I know how to say it correctly? <laughs> Maybe I'll just call you B. Oh, okay, bye, B. Thank you, bye, B. All right, uh, so. Clearing the Shasumna. If you practice the noble behaviors, forgiveness, tolerance, honesty, trust, truth, love, diligence, and, and you practice these as part of your daily existence, no matter what, you're always, always there. And you're doing it within the context of preparing yourself for Kundalini. Those in and of themselves will offer uh, channels to support the spinal cleansing. Um, clearing the shasamna. There is nothing wrong with your shasamna. Um, if anything, you know, it's it's the the energetic anatomy that overlays the shasamna where some some blockages will develop. So your spinal cord is fine. It's fine. Now, there are some things that you can do, like, you know, uh, Stanislav Grof and his wife, you know, they like to, to call it, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, spinal breathing or something like that. And that doesn't really do anything as far as clearing it. It just, it, you know, it just, it blasts it with a lot of prana. And prana isn't necessarily Ajax for the spinal cord. Uh, that that's a that's a cleaning product here in the uh, United States. Uh, so it's that not necessary cleaning it up. What really is helpful, I think, is going into your past, looking at who you've hurt, forgiving yourself, who has hurt you, forgiving them, and working on levels of tolerance, l- working on levels of trust, 
of divine trust, knowing that you are on this path because God is calling you to be on this path, knowing that you are you are on this path not to get great powers, even though they come, but to get great wisdom, because that also comes. You know, find out why you're even on the Kundalini path. Is it because of phenomena that Kundalini has just decided to come into you and now you have this phenomena, and now you're doing all the reading on it, and so the people that don't have kundalini, but, you know, follow the, the advice of those who have, and say, oh, well, Sri, 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 Master Sigurds, Gata, Dominice, Smith, said uh, <laughs> that you must clear the shasumna. Um, and so then you're going to struggle to to clear the shasumna, uh, I'm going to suggest that you just need to practice the noble behaviors. Noble behaviors will have resonance in every chakra and in every space between the chakras, even the overlay of chakras from, say, the first and second chakra. Well, they have the overlay where it's the first and second chakra at the same time. And so, you know, as you practice these qualities of forgiveness and trust and, and, and behaviors that are based in virtue, this will clear the shasumna. This will clear the spinal cord of uh, many of the blockages that a person has. And yet, it won't clear all of them. Some of the blockages, you, you know, take more than just forgiveness or tolerance or trust or honesty or truth. Some of them take more of a teaching, more of a learning, and you have to go within and you have to look at yourself and look at how you are and what you've done and what you're doing right now and, you know, what are you doing to block the kundalini, if anything? Okay, what are your dreams showing you? Because remember, as I've said in other programs, dreams will be very, 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 very communicative about your current level of kundalini awakening and the information that is that is being directed to you within that current expression. Um, clearing the spinal channels really... Is, is to correct, or should I say, uh, um, behaviors that are virtuous, behaviors that that are noble, and that in and of itself will clear the spinal the spinal channels. Now I want to go up to Bybee here. Bybee is a person who is on the flash chat here, and let me scroll on down. And she, her question is this: uh, about a year <coughs> after the activation started. I went through a period of hallucinating, brightly colored, intricate, rotating, three-dimensional geometric shapes that would project out of my forehead. Is there any relationship between this and sacred geometry? Uh, uh, sorry, I couldn't ask a longer question. I'm curious if this happens to others as well. Okay. Oh, and I'd like to say hello to Miss Butter Butterfly. Hello. Okay, so, uh, Bybee, yes, yes, this does have, actually, this has more to do with sacred geometry than sacred geometry has to do with sacred geometry. I'm not sure if that makes any sense to you. Sacred geometry came from people having kundalini and kundalini visions where the, where the rotating shapes would, would appear. and It's actually being projected from your third eye out. Uh, in many ways, these shapes have intelligence and they are communicating something to you. Um, what you have to do is you have to you have to go inside as you see this occurring. Go inside and query the shape that is turning or spinning in front of you. Say hello to it. When you're outside of the five cents uh, expected reality. Uh, consciousness is far more diverse, and I mean intelligent consciousness is far more diverse than it's allowed to be in our five sense reality. And so uh, these spinning shapes are not within our reality, and they are a consciousness of their own. And so you might just uh, inquire of them or just say hello and see what comes back. Uh, this is definitely re related to sacred geometry. It does have a, as you look at, say, the flower of life, flower of life is very connected to sacred uh, geometry. 
Uh, but you can make a flower of life just like Amelia Centara has done. And if you go to her page on uh, Facebook, which I believe is Centara on Facebook, uh, you can see pictures of her 30-foot diameter uh, flower of life. Very, very beautiful. And I'd like to tip my my hat to uh, John O'Connor and Amelia and her and and their children uh, in designing it and keeping it and having it there uh, on the land on the land. It's a blessing to the land. So yeah, yeah, the uh, the sacred geometrics are very real. Um, there there's definitely something worth exploring. You might even start drawing some of the ones that, that you've experienced by the draw it out, you know, and, and uh, let us see. Let us see what you see. Okay? Uh, trinities are very important to the Kundalini. The two that are one and the one that is two equals a trinity. And so if you have, like, say, uh, 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 tetragrams that are spinning or... Or, you know, different, different, almost like uh, sometimes you'll see shapes that look like snowflakes that are very, very geometrically uh, intense. And they're moving and they're spinning. And, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is, <laughs> this is a very real thing. And you might inquire of this. Uh, by the, have you done that? Have you, uh, have you talked to the spinning shapes? And so, uh, if you try that, you know, let us know what 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 is being instructed, uh, or not instructed, but what is being uh, relayed to you with regards to that. Okay. And coming back to Amelia. Hi, Kristen again. Okay. The next question is. If we give healing, do we interfere with a person's karmic sufferings? Well, yes, we do. <laughs> Which is kind of the, the whole point. Um, you're welcome, Bybee. And Bybee responds, No, Kristen, I haven't talked to them, but they do seem intelligent. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, we do. We do. And if we if we are giving a healing with the wrong intention on our part, uh, we can collect some of that karma too. For the laws of karma are very very strict and very very strong. But when you give a healing just to give the healing, you have no personal agenda into it. You're giving a healing because of love, because of compassion, because of you know, because of noble qualities, then it is absolutely okay, and you will not, uh, you will not gain their karma. You may actually uh, loosen up some of yours by giving that grace-based service. You just make sure that you keep yourself out of it. Keep your ego, self-interest out of it. Do not give a healing because you want to be a great healer. Do not give a healing because you want to be recognized for being a great healer. Do not give a healing because you want to heal that person so that they'll owe you one. <laughs> Do not give healing. That is how you accrue karma with healing. I want to say hello to Julie. Hello, Julie. That is how you create karma with healing, is by going into it with... with uh, with an attitude that is more about helping yourself than helping the other person. And in this way, it's helping yourself to self-aggrandizement. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go there because you will indeed create more karma for yourself. Okay. And hello, Ma Deva Sadvi. Nice to see you here too. And uh, go ahead, Amelia, next. Next one. Did I not cover that one fully enough? No, that's, no, I think you did, Chris, and yes. Okay. Um, okay, there was um, some discussion about entity incursion during sleep, and you made a comment. If I could read what you said sure. first, 
and that's the question. Okay, so your response was, um, don't go to sleep using narcotics or alcohol. No sleep aid either, as this can deaden your awareness. Make an inner declaration of trust and faith in the Kundalini process and do not be afraid to stand your ground, certainly with entities. The more you claim your space, the less they have to grab onto. And the question is, would you expand... Wait, 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 wait. You read that totally wrong. Oh, okay. Read the last part again. I remember what I wrote. The more you claim your space, that part? Yes. The more you claim your space, the less they have to grab onto. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll explain that. Um, We were talking about a woman who was being attacked by... Uh, sexual predators, uh, uh, not people, but entities that come and they feed off of the sexual expression by stimulating the sexual expression in a person. These are, these are called incubi and succubi, and they're just, they're just another variety among the many varieties of entities that are out there that, that look for awakened people so that they can suck up some of that sexual energy because they know that the kundalini will increase the uh, libido. And so they're going to try to they're going to try to to harvest a person continuously and they do. They're quite successful at it with with a lot of folks. Uh and what I'm saying is that no. No, no, no. You don't need to do that. You don't need to have them there. You can stand your ground. I mean, I warned them three times and, and the fourth time they saw me or they tried to harvest me, you know, because I can astral project at will when I'm a little, shall we say, pissy. I astral projected right to where they were, and I initiated protocols that would help them understand the error of their ways, certainly with me. And even though they tried after that a few more times, you know, I haven't had pretty much any kind of a problem with them since, and, and neither will you. you got to understand that as you grow in more confidence uh, with, uh, with regards to your process, as you, as you claim your space and you claim your right to exist beyond the five cents uh, um, veil, shall we say, as you as you claim your right to exist beyond the veil, well then, uh, that level of confidence, that level of, of strength, be, becomes placed into your energetic envelope, and other consciousness can sense it uh, from a long ways off. And so, you become less of a victim because of your confidence and your. And your and your competence with what it is that you're doing, okay. Uh, you don't have sex with sexual feeders ever. Never, 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 never have sex with them. That is opening the door. That is giving them the key to the door. So once you've had sex with a sexual predator, such as an incubi or a succubi, uh, or even a you know a, a, a deceased person or somebody who you know. They're still trying to live a corporeal life without having a corporeal body, thereby borrowing yours. Uh, once you do that, then then you're kind of making an agreement with them to, to let this occur. And, and it's not such an easy thing to break at times. And so I'm going to suggest you just don't go there in the first place. Don't go there in the first place. Okay? Control the libidinous desires that they will place in you, too. I mean, that's the big bait that they that, that is used against a person is is their libido is exaggerated. It's, it's, it's given greater expression. And, you know, you know, it's hard for people, for regular people, to ignore that libido. And so, however, for you, for the awakened person, you can ignore that libido because you know that it's not you or the kundalini that's providing it. It's, it is indeed an entity of some sort that is, that is probably using uh, that bait 
to try to get you to unlock the door. So don't do that. Don't do that at all. Can you read the question again, Amelia Centauro, please? I want to make sure I'm getting getting it covered. Um, yes, Chris, I can. Um, where is it? Here it is. Okay. The question is, could you expand a bit further on how one would best do the following? The more you tame your space, the less they have to grab onto. So how would you tame your space? Okay, so claiming the space basically is is kind of what I've been speaking about with regards to to having confidence and competence in who you are and your right to exist beyond the five senses, okay? That is claiming your space. Uh, To claim your space is to control what occurs to it vis-a-vis an entity or not. To claim your space is to is to give your surrender to the kundalini, is to give your life, give your body, give your mind, give your your ego, give everything to the kundalini on purpose and follow that up by making activities that are indeed indicative of that gifting of yourself to the kundalini, to God, so, so to speak. I know a lot of people come from a, from a background where the Sanskrit word kundalini is meaningless to them. It may as well be tortellini. And at least they'd know it was a noodle. But with uh, with uh, enlightenment or self-realization, uh, you need to claim that space. You need to be strong enough and confident enough to claim the space in your life. Let that occur. Let your strength be based in confidence in the kundalini. If you have a teacher, you can also place uh, the confidence in your teacher as well because the kundalini will have led you to that teacher. And that's something that goes back to the one of the previous uh, questions I, I, I talked about. Is, uh, when the kundalini leads you to a teacher, you need to make sure that it's not your ego that's that's professing to be the kundalini that is leading you to a specific teacher. Um, You know, an example of this would be getting led to the beautiful, blonde, bodacious babe that's calling herself a teacher, you know, and, 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 you know, her huge cleavage is basically almost spilling out, and the the man that's looking at her is going, God, I'd love for her to be my teacher. (laughs) That would be an egocentric uh, selection of a teacher. Um, I think most of you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about with regards to this. But, but yeah, make sure that the teacher that, you, that you're that you engaged with is supported by your kundalini, is supported by your gut, is supported by the levels of inner truth that you that you have the availability to understand. And so, and so getting back to this, with the entities, the stronger you are in your commitment to the kundalini, the weaker they are in their effect over you. The, the more fearful you are and the more uh, engaged you are with the ego, the stronger the level of uh, entity interaction will be uh, in the person. And so you really do have a choice. You can choose to give yourself to God or you can choose to give yourself to your ego. If you give yourself to the ego, then you're going to be plagued by some sort of entity interaction. Uh, and, and in either case, I will suggest that you, you ignore the entities completely. Now, if you have to face them like I had to face the incubi, succubi, well, then fine. But you do it with the, with the idea of terminating any kind of interaction, which is what I did. I told them they were not allowed to come to me under any circumstance ever again. And I backed it up with, with, uh, how do I say it? <laughs> I backed it up forcefully, shall we say. And then snapped right back to the body. Okay, now, I know I hear it already. Well, gosh, Chris, I can't astral project, you know, or bilocate or, you know, do the, any of those things that you can do. And so, well, I'll say right back to you, yes, you can. (laughs) Yes, you can. You can do pretty much anything I can do. You just have to give yourself permission to do it and then do a little practice and have a little 
confidence in what it is you're doing and don't don't be afraid of what it is you see okay and astral projection is something that I would suggest all kundalini people explore because it is a great way to receive kundalini teaching um you know in in the in the in the astral in the uh in the uh, levels of existence beyond the physical okay so coming back to Amelia here now if anybody has a question and you'd like to either write it out in the in the chat room which I welcome you to do or if you'd like to call in the number is 347-934-0026 that's the United States area code 347-934-0026 if you're calling from outside of the United States make sure you put your country the country code which I believe is 01 and then it would be 347-934-0026. Uh, please, uh, the next question, Miss Amelia. Okay, I'm going to read out. Um, this is a little long, so I, hopefully I'll, I'll read it okay. So it says, I am wondering, how does one practice forgiveness to something that isn't necessarily an individual or group of people? I have a lot of anger towards current power structures in the Western world, that is, current economic structure that exploits the weak and tries to manipulate the people for their own material interests, and also to people that buy into that structure and support their own exploitation. I am having a hard time releasing that anger and feeling forgiveness because there doesn't seem to be anyone to really direct that forgiveness towards. So any framing this in a simpler way would be greatly appreciated. Any what? In a simpler way would be greatly appreciated. What did you say that before? Before a simpler way? Any <laughs> okay, do I need to read out the end of it again? Yeah, just the end of it. Okay, so the person is having a hard time releasing that anger and feeling forgiveness because there doesn't seem to be anyone to really direct that forgiveness towards. So have you any help framing this in a simpler way? Well, no, I'm not going to, I'm certainly not going to frame it in a simpler way. Uh, maybe just in a way that, that is maybe a different perspective. Uh, there are reasons why there is negativity on this world. Uh, part of the of the reasoning for negativity is that people need to meet their karmic uh, their karmic debt, and that's how we have people that are being killed in wars. That's how we are having people that are poor, people that are infirm, people that are sick, people that are murdered, people that are raped, people that are that have crimes uh, enacted upon them, and then especially children, children who are abused. Uh, you know, in many cases, they're living through a karmic period as well. Uh, we have an active uh, world that is engaged in the constant development towards the divine expression. And part of that constant development is karma that is enacted upon the populations of the world. And that karma is going to be, you know, placing a person who has a karmic trigger to be, uh, let me back up a little bit, with Kundalini, with Kundalini, the person comes into this with, with strong levels of honesty and truth and love and fairness and justice and strength and, and uh, you know, these qualities are very, very, very pronounced in the Kundalini awakened individual. And it's hard for that Kundalini awakened individual to look at what's going around and, you know, how, how this world is set up. We have to have wars. Okay? Not everybody is at the same stage of development. You know, we're, we're, we, we have college kids mixed in with kindergartners when it comes to uh, levels of karma on this world. Okay, we, we, you know, everybody, regardless of their age, has specific levels of karma that they have to work through. 
Now, when you look at this on a societal level and you say, oh, my gosh, this, this, is, a, this is a society that takes advantage of the poor and makes the rich richer and, you know, might is right and all of these different concepts. And what you, what you need to do to forgive that is to not become that which you're angry about. So once again, you know, you're, you're, you're doing the, the, the uh, crucible of reversal. You're reversing that process. So you become a, 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 a person who is compassionate for the poor. You become that opposite quality that you're having a problem forgiving, uh, you know, in, in, in your life. You become, so for instance, you know, if you're told to, to do harm to such and such because your government tells you to do that, well, instead, you become a bastion of kindness. You become a, a, somebody who gives love, who gives respect, who gives consideration. You begin to change the world by having the kundalini at all. And by having the kundalini, as you, as you practice the graces that come through the kundalini, you begin to change that world around you. Uh, I, I, I think I've spoken before about the radiance footprint of a kundalini awakened person and what, what occurs to people as they live their lives while in, encountering that radiance. Well, it begins to, to suggest to them more compassion, more tolerant, more honesty, more truth, more love, more happiness, more joy, more of the qualities that that some of this uh, societal programming does not represent. Okay. Uh, with, you know, with regards to these types of forgivenesses, your actions become that forgiveness. Your actions become that balance. By, by refusing to, to dial in or to, to respond to the uh, manipulations towards fear that we seem to be constantly receiving in the United States. You know, right now, oh, it's, it's ISIS is so bad. We have to have this war against ISIS. Oh, my gosh, we can't have the, 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 the current power structure manipulated or, oh, my gosh, no, no, no. You know, and so, you know, all of this programming now, you know, because the media is owned by big business and big business owns the political uh, representatives, you know, therefore, you know, the way it's going to be is that, you know, they're going to try to push, uh, push the American people into levels of rage. And there's enough people, uh, you know, in the, in the United States population that will respond to that. <laughs> That it, you know, it makes it a viable programming tool, and uh, and so the Kundalini person says, no, 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 I'm not going to buy into that. And so therefore, you're not part of the problem. And if you can step out of your anger and step out of your irritation, then you can step into greater levels of forgiveness. But you can't be forgiving at the same time that you're angry or threatened or, 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 or feeling, uh, you know, anxiety uh, by what you see happening around you. Uh, if, you can, if you can focus well enough, you can take what you see around you and change it by your own actions. You can give prayers to the society. I mean, don't think that your prayers are not heard. Your prayers are absolutely heard. They are heard, but... Part of the thing is, is in, 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 shall we say, Occidental thinking, which is basically white European, you know, they, they don't know how to pray correctly. They don't know how to give a prayer power. And, uh, and so, you know, they pray and they ask for things, but they don't give anything. They don't give the necessary constituents uh, that a prayer requires and this is where the Huna prayer is so effective because it teaches us how to turn our prayer from basically just asking for this, this, or that into something that pretty much is going to give you what you're praying for. I mean, the Huna people say, yeah, go ahead, ask for a new car. You'll get it. 
but you just have to do it the right way. And in, and in the, the, the context of this question, uh, pray, number one, that you can step out of your anger. Your anger at society, your anger at the conditions. Uh, pray that you can step outside of that, number one. Number two, then pray for a more compassionate response in society if it's appropriate. Because you have to remember, you don't understand what every other person on this planet's karma is. Okay, you don't understand, you know, that, you know, this this person has to fight in a war. This person has to to uh, to die a, a terrible, horrible death. Person has to do that in order to balance their karma. But it's also not saying that if they manage to get into the presence of a kundalini awakened individual that isn't dominated by entities, then that individual and the presence and the radiance that is flowing through that individual can indeed change the karma of the individual. Just like in the last question, you know, do you get in the way of karma when you're giving a healing? Well, no, you don't. You just have to do it within the right context, within the right intention within within an expression of giving aid and assistance that does not uh, make a judgment that does not go into the the uh, the five bodies of human expression discernment but goes straight into the discernment of the kundalini okay you're not doing this for self-aggrandizement. You're not doing this to be the great healer. You're not doing this to be the great leader. You're not doing this to change society so that you can be king or queen. You're doing this out of the goodness of that which flows within you, of that divine spark that flows within you. You're doing it for that grace. You're doing it because it is, it is right to do it for those reasons the right thing to do and if we get enough kundalini awakened people understanding that very very basic premise then we can indeed change this world into a better place and those those who have those karmic uh, debts that need to be paid well they'll go to a different world that allows them to pay those debts in the way that they accrued them okay Get rid of your anger first. Get rid of your irritation first. Then initiate your forgivenesses. And forgive yourself for being angry and irritated as well. You know, you're being part of the problem. If you just walk around with with that huge kundalini footprint, being angry and irritated, you're part of the problem. Clear yourself first. Forgive yourself. And then you'll be able to forgive others for their indiscretion, including society. So we'll go back to Amelia here. Yes, Your Holiness. Thank you, Chrism. So the next question is, since my kundalini awakened, I barely eat and go outside. I am not hungry. I have visions. My body changes. I'm trusting the process. Is there anything I should know to support this? You should know the safety. Safety protocols, these these are on uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com. That's all one word, by the way. Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com. And you look down, and it's the one, two, three, four, fifth option down the left menu and these are what you need to to practice these you do these every day especially if you're newly awakened you do the kundalini awakening safety protocols every day and this will begin that that level of modulation of your energetic evolution that's occurring to you in real time this is not something that, oh, okay, if you pray long enough, well, eventually, if your faith is strong enough, then something might happen. No. This is happening to a person right now, right there, and uh, it's very important to understand that this is not wishful thinking. 
this person has the kundalini it's it's coming through them it's 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 beginning to to help them with their process by causing them to ask such an important question a question that was indeed uh you know asked here on this program and it will be in the archives for as long as this program exists and even longer so yes you practice the safety protocols you put your tongue tip up behind your upper front teeth number one you put your fingers you your forefinger tip to your thumb tip and your other fingers spread out number two you bring your eyes into an upward position as if you're looking way up into the sky but you're not moving your head so the eyes kind of go up and back into the skull number three you stay hydrated you stop drinking caffeine no caffeine products no colas no coffees no black teas you can have plenty of herb teas you can have plenty of clear clean beautiful wonderful water you can have juices but stay away from the caffeine okay watch what the kundalini has you eat if you're a vegetarian and you've been a vegetarian for so many years and all of a sudden the kundalini says i want you to eat that prime rib or that steak well then you eat the prime rib or the steak okay you pay attention to the force that is changing you from the inside out okay you get yourself away from negative programming i.e uh, uh scary hurtful movies um, scary, hurtful books, scary, hurtful lyrics and songs, uh, scary, hurtful church sermons, you know, propounding lakes of fire and burning in hell and all this crud that they like to put out. Uh, you know, put aside those types of programming and initiate programming that is peace-based, that is joy-based, that is love-based, that is happiness-based, and let your immediate patterning that the kundalini is processing you into be representative of those happier qualities stay away as much as you can from negative programming make sure that you begin your forgivenesses forgive everyone in your life forgive yourself in addition to everyone in your life because you are one person that is in your life and in your life you're the main person so forgive yourself and then forgive those who, who have caused you harm. And you'll have to do this more than once. It's, it's not enough to say, well, okay, Chris, and I sat down and I, I thought of everybody I could think of and I forgive them. Okay, now what? You know, this is not a McDonald's equation. This is not fast food for the soul. You have to practice this over and over and over and over and over and over until you finally come to a level of understanding that, yes, 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 indeed, this part I'm done with. And even then, you know, later on in your experience, you may need to come back and revisit it again because somebody else's experience has, you know, touched on areas that you have, have, a, have a, a clear memory of. And so forgive, 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 and forgive, and then from your forgiveness you'll develop tolerance, tolerance for people, tolerance for situations that that get you angry or, or, or get you irritated. You rise above responding likewise by having tolerance. Tolerance is really, really important in this world, as you know, as per the last question, you know, what are you know, all these things in society make me angry. Well get yourself out of anger and get yourself into tolerance. Tolerance is a huge beneficial quality within the Kundalini awakening because typically we awaken around people who are not awakened. And their little idiosyncrasies and problems and and issues and, and karma may not sit so well with you, and so you must forgive. You must be tolerant. And these are good experiences. All of these experiences with irritation, with anger, with hurt, with blame, with forgiveness, all of these things should serve to really help you understand where it is you need to work uh, within your Kundalini Awakening experience. You know, what areas do you need to work with? How how can you uh, modulate your responses that your whole life you've been doing one way into a different way? And tolerance is one of those ways that are 
very, very helpful. And so is honesty and truth. Kundalini will insist on honesty and truthfulness because if you don't pay attention to honesty and truth, it will hurt you in the heart. You will have some sort of a cardiac event, whether it feels like a, a, a broken heart or heart pain, uh, your lack of truthfulness or honesty will be the one to blame for that. So really, really look at that as you're in this part of your kundalini awakening uh, paradigm. Now, if you can, you know, you know, go go to this uh, to this area on the web, the the uh, safeties area. You know, make sure that that you don't drink the caffeine, that you stay hydrated. You know, have watermelon every every day in the morning if you can. Um, Stay away from the programming. Observe food choices. You know, let the kundalini pick your food for a while. Uh, and you'll also let the kundalini pick whatever expression it wants you to have or not have. So if your libido disappears, don't worry. It's not gone forever. It's just being used for something else right now. And be okay with that. Be okay with that. Um, practice the different uh, traditions of forgiveness, whether it's... Uh, you know, just forgiveness from, say, a blo emotional blockages or doing a recapitulation, which is writing everything down. And Because we, we tend to remember what it is we write uh, on a piece of paper. Remember your inner joy. Remember that when you come into these positions where you're terrified because of an entity or because of a, of a, of a dream, maybe of a, of a past life quality to it, it's just really, really hard. Just remember a time or an event in your life where you had inner joy, where you had joy. I don't care if it's just a childhood memory sitting around the Christmas tree. Whatever works, bring that joy into the into the uh, the fear, and the fear is is greatly negated. Trust the process that is happening to you. Know and understand that divinity is watching everything. Is watching everything that you do you are safe in the arms of divinity as long as you practice the love and the forgiveness that are part of what is being taught with the safeties if you stray into areas of negativity willfully and with malice of forethought well then that is what you will receive in real time so trust the kundalini it has your best interests at heart and if that's your best interests whether you realize it or not is part of its agenda Okay, and as I mentioned before, be honest and truthful as much as you can. Okay, that doesn't mean that if you're standing in front of a dictator and the dictator says, uh, you know, will you follow my dictatorial responses or orders, commands? And you know that if you say no, that you'll be killed, you know, say yes. It's more important that you live and that you're alive uh, than telling that one lie. And, yeah, let your heart feel that one lie, but also let your heart feel the, the continuous pumping that it's able to do now because you've said that little lie. So there are always, you know, there are always some levels of flexibility that a person needs to have, especially if you're living in a, in a war zone. Love actively. Love what is happening. Express the active love by being actively forgiving or interested in being of service to others. Not like a slave or, or in any way demeaning, but in a confident and strength-based loving way. Help the kid or the senior citizen or, or the animal, which I call fellow mortal, without endangering yourself. Endangering yourself. Uh, this allows the kundalini to activate your systems much cleaner and more quickly. And I know it sounds stupid, but... Love is the strongest quality, and just as the negative can turn around and bite, so does the love turn around and embrace. Love is what causes the energy to move rapidly. And as you practice this, this, this expression, you'll find that negativity just doesn't seem to come your way as much. Service to others or for others is also an essential practice for the kundalini, Others who have activated without the teachings of love have and are suffering terribly. And my, my heart goes out to them, but they will learn in their own good or bad time. They will learn. 
what you're learning right now. This is one of the strongest safeties you can practice because, as I mentioned before, you're being observed by your kundalini, by divinity, really. And those who are observing you uh, will not allow you, you who are a part now uh, of them, to be harmed for the practice of love. Now, if there's a karma connection there, well, okay, then you'll have to burn that karma. Like uh, if you broke somebody's heart in this lifetime or in another lifetime, well, then you will have your heart to be broken indeed in this lifetime as well. And that does not mean that you are, because heartbreaks are really, really traumatic. They're very, very difficult, exceptionally difficult. And and for that person who is having a heartbreak, uh, the world is basically coming to end. One of the one of the main sources of suicide is a broken heart. And, and so you can see how very, very important it is to a person. You need to understand that, that sometimes you will need to have heartbreaking experiences only because of the karma that it allows you to balance. No other reason. So you forgive yourself then and, and you endure that balancing now. Okay, love is one of the best best safeties you can practice. Uh, so really, really practice it as much as you can. Certainly with uh, within the uh, interactions with others. Gratitude to Kundalini, gratitude to the divine, huge, hugely important. As you are grateful uh, for the ideas and thoughts and wisdoms that begin to flow into your mind, sometimes like a flood, be grateful for the kundalini as it is bringing you to a new and greater understanding of the all that is. Be grateful to your family, your friends, and your karma. Be grateful to perfect strangers for what they bring into your life and the opportunities that come your way. Say to yourself in your mind and heart that you are grateful for these gifts and even greater ones will come your way. This is the nature of the kundalini path you're walking. Diligence and integrity are richly rewarded. Now, I, I spoke of prayer a little while ago, and uh, I want to make sure I have time. Uh, you know, divini- divinities are real. I mean, I just had Christ appear to another student uh, just a, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, Divinity is real. Uh, Christ is real. Mary is real. Yahweh, Buddha, Allah, Zeus, Sabel, uh, just to name a few. They're all real. And yes, I know, this can be a real stretch for some of you, and it was for me too, because as you know, I wasn't raised in a religious environment. But prayer works, especially if you know how to do the power of prayer, which I think will we're going to go through the Power of Prayer uh, next Wednesday, so if you're interested, uh, that show will be all about the Power of Prayer. The HUNA, H-U-N-A, the HUNA Power of Prayer. Now, when we come to the prayer and the HUNA Power of Prayer, I and my kundalini have really um, found truth and integrity inside of the max Freedom Long Books with regards to HUNA. Not the current, not the current books about HUNA. Uh, the current books about HUNA is very, very different. I'm not going to say they're good or they're bad. All I, all I will say is that the, uh, the, the Kundalini in me resonates far more with what Max Freedom Long wrote about HUNA rather than what uh, the current... Uh, contemporary expressions of Huna are. And so with that being said, that is the power prayer that we will be talking about next Wednesday is the Huna power prayer. And I think I have mentioned it here before, but I think it, it, it deserves a a, uh, a review. Uh, make sure that you move your body. Dance. Do some free-form dancing. Do Tai Chi or yoga. Uh, seriously, folks, these activities are hugely important, you know, to the to the uh, to the Kundalini within the uh, the level of the person who's asking this uh, question. Dance, free form dance. You can do it to music or just moving around. 
Tai Chi, Qigong, Yoga. Uh, these activities nurture the Kundalini energy in your body. Work out. Right now I have one student. This is just one student. Uh, and they do this every time I tell them to do it. They're doing it. They're doing 21 minutes of running on one of those conveyor belt runners that you get in a, in a uh, gym. 21 minutes of running or walking. 21 minutes of rowing. 21 minutes of weightlifting. And then another 21 minutes of a, of a certain type of uh, exercise that I want to exercise a certain area on their body. This is every time they go to the gym. That's over an hour. And it's the same thing every time. Well, close to the same thing every time. Move it, people. Get off the couch. Get off the couch. Okay, move it. Uh, go into the garden. Dig in the garden. Set up a irrigation system like I just did. You know, really move it. Move it. Use those muscles. If you haven't been using it, well, then, yeah, you're going to be sore. But that soreness will go away in a few days. Don't let that stop you. Okay? Dance, tai chi, yoga, martial arts, body body lifting, gym work, dance. I mean, really, really get into moving the body around. Let the kundalini dance you. Let the kundalini dance you. Okay, now... There's more to go through, but I want to I want to get all of these questions in. So, Mianya uh, Centara, the next question. Oh, oh, here we go. Hang on a second. Let's see. How much watermelon should we be having? <laughs> Tense upset my stomach. And would there be an alternative to watermelon? Yes, uh, the alternative to watermelon is coconut water, coconut milk, coconut, the nut itself. Uh, basically, uh, Julie, we're just looking for... Uh, uh, electrolytes. Now, watermelon has combinations of nutrients that are very helpful. But and, and you know, if you're if you're in a level of hard detox, then it's good to do it. But if it's giving you an upset stomach, back off of it for a little bit, Julie. Back off of the watermelon. You know, I don't want you to do it to the point where you're getting an upset stomach, and don't eat so much uh, that it upsets your stomach. Now, you know, in other words, have one slice. That isn't a big slice. <laughs> Maybe split it with your son. Don't eat, you know, you just might want to back off. That's what I'm getting for you actually right now is that you just want to back off of it as far as the quantity that you're eating. The, uh, the uh, yeah, the, the, the nutrients in the watermelon are still giving you uh, good things, but how much you have of it is is, is, is really, it, it can distend your stomach if you eat too much of it, but then, you know, it's such a lightweight fruit that it will be compacted quite easily. Um, so, yeah, yeah, and I see that you're typing, and I will, I will uh, uh, hopefully be able to wait for you to type. Just sitting here tap dancing. There we are. Uh, that's why I was asking, I may be eating too much at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back it off a little bit. Uh, that's, that's what the, the Kundalini is telling me for you. Uh, so yes, yes, uh, Amelia Centara, next question. Okay, next question. Is there any correlation between Kundalini and karma brought from past life? Did Kundalini burn and cleanse bad karma? Well, yes, it does. It does, and that is why, as a child, if you're if you're engaging in a life that is going to have Kundalini awakening in it, wherever, the the, the child portion of the life can be quite difficult. Uh, it can be full of abuse. It can be full, whether it's physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, or any mixtures of, of those qualities I've just stated. Uh, it can be filled with uh, traumas, different night terrors, uh, uh, wetting the bed. I mean, all of these things can happen to kids that are inside of a kundalini awakening uh, e equation without anybody, including themselves, knowing it yet. Uh, you know, and don't buy into this 
uh, anybody that wets the bed or has enuresis is going to be a serial killer. That is such a crock of shit. Okay. Could just as well be a saint. Okay. I, 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 you know, and I'm not going to go into the connection of enuresis with, uh, with uh, any of these qualities, but, you know, sometimes the Kundalini child will have enuresis, and he's not, or she, they are not to be judged or hurt or, you know, just let that go because those muscles will develop. You know, you just got to keep those sheets clean. That's all you got to do. Put a plastic membrane around the, around the uh, mattress or the box room, whatever they're sleeping on. Um, children have it rough. There's no two ways about it in this society and in the many different societies of this world. Children have it the hardest because they're the least... Uh, they're in a position that doesn't allow them a lot of control because in this world, uh, might is right, and so things can be forced upon you. Things can be forced upon you against your will. And so, yeah, karma is burned. Karma is burned, and it is balanced, and it is made. It is made. Okay. Uh, So... In many cases, you you know, it, it, it can be such a slow, slow dance into evolution. You know, as, as, we, as we burn one set of karma, well, we make a whole other set of karma. And then as we burn that set of karma, we make a whole other set of karma. And so this is why uh, the noble behaviors are really, really, really being pushed out there with regards to Kundalini awakening. You've got to live the noble life. Let me say it again. You've got to live the noble life, the noble behaviors. Let me let me give some of the noble behaviors to you, okay? Love, forgiveness, tolerance, truth, honesty, diligence, inner joy. Did I say trust? Well, trust again. <laughs> Gratitude, prayer. Movement, service to other people, okay? These are the noble qualities. Practice these noble qualities all the time. And it doesn't have to be boring. You know, I know it's, oh, God, I have to be truthful. Oh, God, how boring is that? Okay, I'll be truthful. No, it can be quite exciting. You know, the, the, the exploration of truth is a, is a huge, huge, beautiful thing. It's like a wonderful flower. So be that truth. Explore the truth that you are. And yes, yes, realize that as you practice the noble qualities, you'll be challenged by that practice. You'll be challenged by society. You'll be challenged by your karma. You'll be challenged by what you have yet to work on. And contrary to popular Vedic and Hindu belief, Kundalini does not solve all your karmic issues for you. You get to do that. That's your work. Kundalini will bring it up, you know. Kundalini will bring up and red flag the ones you need to work on. Maybe not in such a visual way as I just described, but it will, you know, isolate certain qualities that you need to work on but it's not going to solve them for you. Kundalini is not here to solve your problems. It's not here to make you rich or make you Superman or Superwoman. This is part of your self-realization. God-realization. So don't expect your problems to be solved. You can expect your depressions to be lifted, however. I noticed that. Your depression uh, can be helped, can be greatly healed. With I was chronically depressed for most of my life. Not taking any drugs for it, but still, you know, the depression is there. Uh, and once the Kundalini came, you know, this time in this body, the depression was lifted. You might say the depression was also part of my karma. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Karma is a very, very big deal. And it is the fulcrum of our evolution. Even Edgar Casey said it, you know, it's 
every jot and tittle, those are the words he used, meaning every point of contention that you have uh, manifested towards another person or towards yourself, uh, you will you will get to, to face. You will get to balance. Okay. So know that. Understand that. Realize that. Take that information to your heart. And begin to, to walk and talk and think and be uh, hand in hand with your evolution. Hand in hand with the Kundalini that's coming through you and into you and for you and with you. And don't think that you're alone because you're not alone. There are literally hundreds of Kundalini awakened people in this world. Most don't like to talk about it for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, some of us will. Some of us will help. Some of us reach out. And, and for all of you listening uh, in the chat room and out of the chat room and in the archive, I want to invite you to take conscious responsibility for your evolution now. You know what causes it. You know what you have to do. You practice those safeties. And you're well on your way. Well on your way. I don't know if I answered that one well enough, but there it goes. Yes, my dear. Next. Yes, you did. Thank you. And the next question is a little long again. It says, since awakening started in May, my PMS symptoms have changed. Now I get intense pain in the spine all the way from the hips to crown. A mild headache at the top crown accompanies it. The pain feels like it's in my bones rather than muscles. It goes on for days at a time. Every month since awakening, it's the same thing. So is this Kundalini? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is absolutely Kundalini. Kundalini will change the menstrual cycles of a woman. She can have two to three menstrual cycles in a month. I mean, it changes everything hormonally in, in the human system. And so it's very important for people to realize that, especially women to realize that, but also men as well. Okay, with the women, the, the menstrual cycle will change. Uh, sometimes you'll have none. And as I mentioned before, sometimes you'll have two to three. I mean, it changes up the whole uh, – trying to find the word here. <laughs> it changes up the whole endocrine system, and that includes the menstrual – cycle that includes the ovulation cycle that it, that includes everything and so don't think anything is wrong now the pain that you have in your bones well the pain that you have in your bones uh is the kundalini it is part of the change that is occurring and it shouldn't be a strong pain i i'm not getting a strong pain about this for you uh but it it is it is a change that will it's like teething Teething in a two-year-old, that's, that's a bone issue as well. And, you know, the teething pain that comes to a two-year-old uh, is very similar to some of, the, some of the deep pains that can come to the Kundalini awakened person. And it's just something that you just need to be patient with, need to be grateful for, excuse me, need to be grateful for. And you may ask, oh, where do you find the gratitude and pain in my bones? Well, you find gratitude in it that you are even being allowed to have the kundalini begin to transform your skeletal systems, to transform them, to exalt them, to bring them into a greater level of divine expression. And so, yes. As you're, as you're changing into a divine expression, your bones are going to change. And as your bones are being changed, there may be some pain that's associated with that pain or with that change. And so, so be cognizant of that. Be okay with it. It, will, it won't last forever. It'll be gone. And, you know, you can all, you know, the kundalini will tell you if this is a karmic pain. You know, it's just something that, that I need to look at with, with how I have been in the past. Uh, or is this just a growing pain? And so you'll need to talk with your kundalini just like I'm talking with you right now. Or as, as you see me interact or, or hear me interact with Amelia Centara or Fashji or Julie or 
any any of the people there, talk with your kundalini. Don't expect an audio answer, by the way. You can see answers as pictures, as symbols. You may hear audio answers in your dream space, but don't don't expect a, an audio hallucination at this point with regards to your talking to the kundalini. That would just be more phenomena to 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 ring your bells and whistles with. And so, you know, the kundalini will give you phenomena for sure, but it won't necessarily give you phenomena that you have an expectation of receiving. Okay. It won't necessarily give you that phenomena. It will give you the phenomena that you require for for your continued evolution. You know, don't get hung up on 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 the, the whole idea that that uh, that you're in control of your evolution because you're really not. You're in you're in control as you respond to the kundalini. But the kundalini is the master teacher, and it will begin to modulate how it wants you to have what it wants you to have. And there is no race. There is no reason for competition with other people. Not that you mentioned that, but I'm just mentioning this uh, on the side here. You don't need to compare yourself with others. You don't need to have all kinds of amazing phenomena. Oh, my gosh, yesterday I was eating a star, and it... And I regurgitate it up, and it came out as a moon. And he's like, oh, please, save it. You know, that's just more self-aggrandizement. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't blow your horn. A lot of the, the kundalini people that are on these various communities I have, they're already, uh, they've already got entities inside them. And these entities are just kind of, playing with the individual, you know, using levels of self-aggrandizement, uh, using levels of manipulation to, you know, to play games with them and to, to initiate fear or danger or mistrust or things of that nature. Uh, so once again, you know, the whole entity thing there is a, is a crucible of reversal. You know, you don't listen to them. You don't partake of the chatter that they give. You don't pay them any attention. Okay. Just I know I, I went back a little bit on that one, but I think I answered well, that one closely enough. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, you did. But actually, the next question is connected with entities again. And the question is, why do we see them? Does it mean something? Well, oh, I, I answered that question. <laughs> Oh, not since I checked. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why do we answer this? Like, well, we 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 see them because we can see them. Do you understand what I'm saying? We see them because we can see them. And all of a sudden, it's like the the infant asking the mother, "How come I see all these shapes?" Well, because your eyes have matured to the point where you can see those shapes. Okay, and so when you have the kundalini, well, you're going through another birth. You're going from a birth that accepts the mundane physicality as well as the divine physicality. So you see both. Now, for the most part, you're still anchored in the physical reality, but that anchoring doesn't preclude you from seeing the divine reality, at all, it doesn't. It doesn't stop that at all. It, it, you know, in many ways, it'll accentuate that. So you will see entities. You see them because they have things to teach you about yourself. Uh, for the most part, entities are controlled by your kundalini. Nope. I'm getting a phone call here. I'm just going to pardon me. But anyway, um, so oh, so uh, with regards to seeing the entities, the entities have things to teach you about fear, about uh, seniority of your body. Who, who, who owns your body anyway? Is it you, or is it like uh, Grand Central Station for entities? 
you know, a lot of these channelers, you know, they have no, no jurisdiction over their body at all. They've made agreements where anything and everything can come in and walk through them, talk through them, breathe through them, see through them, speak through them, think through them. That is, I will counsel all of you to stay away from channelers. Stay away from channelers. Uh, certainly stay away from this one guy. What's his name? Uh, Bashar. I think he goes by the name of Bashar, which to me, you know, just the name itself says, oh, maybe maybe I don't feel like being Bashar today. So, so yeah, stay away from the, from the channelers because all they do is attract entities that like to possess you. That's what they're all about. Oh, yeah, they'll give you all kinds of information about this, this, or that. None of it can be proven. None of it, you know, is, is really applicable. You know, it's just sort of like Byron Caddy, you know, whatever, you know, they say, you know, be yourself now, blah, blah, blah. But it's, you know, when they say stuff like be yourself now, it's just like, well, you be yourself now without that entity then. Kundalini is being yourself now. That is your internal resource of the divine. That is as much channeling as you ever need to do. Okay. Entities are there to teach you about yourself, about your fear, about your courage, about your willingness to do the right thing. Typically, I will say, ignore them. Don't talk with them. Don't look at them. Don't interact with them in any way, shape, or form. You do what your kundalini tells you to do or the teacher that the kundalini has has guided you to have. And we're coming down to the wire here, Miss Amelia. Do we have another question? We have one more. It is, I am practicing surrendering my body to the kundalini. Is this correct? Yes. Next question. <laughs> okay. Um, wow, that was my last no. one. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. So, so you, had, you answer yeah. that question, Amelia. What, what is the, what's the appropriate answer for that question? The appropriate answer is yes. I mean, I I certainly surrender my body to the Kundalini and my mind. I surrender everything to the Kundalini, and my physical body is very much part of me. And so, yes, that's it's an absolute yes. And just make sure it's to the Kundalini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. There you have it. You answer your own, your own question. You can also surrender to the flesh teacher as well. Uh, but that again is surrendering to the it's Kundalini. To the you're kundalini. not in the yes. yeah. You're not in the presence of that teacher without the Kundalini. So there you have it. There you have it. I see. <laughs> so I want to I want to thank everybody for listening to this program. Uh, there is a a Kundalini Awakening seminar happening in Egan, Minnesota, which is right there in uh, 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 um, the Twin Cities of. Minneapolis and St. Paul in the great state of Minnesota, the the state of 10,000 lakes. And uh, I would really like to see as many of you who can make it. I don't care if if you you know sleep in your car, you can sleep in my room. You know, I'll sleep in the car. I don't care. I just want to see you there. I'd like to see you there in person. For any of you that I'd can like... come. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I'd like to encourage people to go to Chrism because, you know, Kundalini seminars with Chrism is rare. There, there's not that many of them happening. And so this one um, is probably the last one this year. And um, so, yeah, I mean, if you're in a position at all to get there, I mean, if it's at all possible and you're feeling this um, inner pull 
to consider it. Well, then listen to that pull, listen to that push, and and follow through on it. And when you begin that process, you'll find that you know you you'll find a way to get there. This has been my experience with people who have come to seminars in Ireland and the last one in New York. It wasn't easy for everybody. People had to make certain sacrifices or had to really, some people had to move around quite a lot. But it was important to them to give this time to the Kundalini, to give this time to their process and to come and learn from um, a Kundalini Awakened teacher, to come and learn from other people, from a teacher that they have this um, pull to from their own Kundalini. So seriously, because, you know, if you're getting this within you, please, I would appeal to you, listen to it. And I speak from some, you know, from a place of knowing this, not just through my own experience of having done that, because I went way out of my way to, you know, to go to these seminars initially, and it was so worth it. I cannot tell you the value and the the difference that it's made to my life. And so why wouldn't it make it to, to yours if you're listening to my words now? So, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so come and meet other Kundalini awakened people like Amelia Santara. Come and meet, the, forget about Chrism, you know, you can yawn, go to the bathroom, go to sleep whenever you're speaking. <laughs> but, and you might. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but come meet people like, like Amelia Santara or, or, you know, EDG or Madhava Sadhvi or Fascia or Celestial Rubies. I mean, these are very, very, very interesting people with very, very similar stories. Like, I was so happy to be able to find one seminar back back in the early, early, well, whenever it was, many years ago. And just to meet the people and just to, oh, my gosh, what a grace that was. And I had to make... I had to make loans just for the airfare. I had to. I stayed at uh, youth hostels just to to be able to go to that weekend seminar. And you know, it really does make a difference. It is really a beautiful event, and I would like to uh, invite all of you to to come to this event. All of the all of you who can really make it an issue. Uh, begin to bring your Kundalini ev- evolution into a real time. Uh, context, a real-time activity, something that is real, that you can share with other people having it. Okay, and this is what Rosemary and Eileen have done in setting this up in Minnesota. Uh, this is the second one we will we will give in Minnesota, and this is what Amelia did when she set these up in in uh, up upstate New York and and in Ireland and in the various places that she's done it around Ireland. I think she's set up one, two, three, four, right, Amelia? Yeah, yeah, four in in Ireland and the one in New York, and we had one in your own Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. As well. Yeah, so yeah, five, yeah, yeah, five, yeah. yeah. So, so you know, people are attending these. You attend them as well. I mean, it is well worth it. It is well worth it. Okay. Do you want to give Rosemary's address? It's, I I can give it. It's Rosemary G at usinternet.com. And, and get in contact with her if you have any questions at all, and she'd be delighted to hear from you. Or Eileen Loro. You can reach Eileen Loro at E-L-O-R-O-5-5 at yahoo.com. And uh, bring Eileen on right now. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Chrism. Is there anything we left out as far as as far as uh for the seminar? The only thing the other thing I would like to say is Friday evening we're having a reception. Um so it's pre seminar and we can get together. Anyone who comes in on Friday will be able to get together and meet you. Um so yeah, that's meet. about that's about the only I'm sorry, what? No, that's okay. I was going to say something sarcastic, but no. <laughs> <laughs> You're in <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll see you. Yes, you will. I will see you as well. And, and Amelia, any parting words of wisdom? 
No, <laughs> just to say next week then I'll, we're going to have, you're going to talk about the Huna Power Prayer. So yes. let everybody, you know, make a note of that and tune back in and see you maybe Julie and Fashji and MJ and Diva and everybody in the chat room. Great seeing you all and the people that will be listening in the archives. Thank you, Chrism. Thank you very much, Amelia, and thank you, John O'Connor. Uh, for for allowing this show to exist, and I will see everybody. I will see everybody next week. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>